The power of love is here now. The power of now is here now. The power of you, me, is here to create magic on us. Welcome back to the Mastering You podcast with Natalie Newhart. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's get to work. I am so excited to have you on here. Uh, today, well, actually last episode, we talked about why um, why it can be so hard for us to stick to things, right? The, to stick to things that we say we want, to, to habits that we want to embody, to certain, you know, the person that we want to become, the life we want to create, and certain goals, et cetera. And so today, I, what I wanted to do is talk about the key ingredient to actually getting yourself, how do I stick to the things I say I want, right? Um, and, you know, I've worked with thousands of people and all I have to say is that, you know, first off, like nobody is, no, it doesn't come easy for anyone, right? Like nobody is born a superhero. Um, when it comes to building this, the best version of ourselves, the best life, the, the person we want to become built, creating a uh, peak health and vitality in our body, um, this isn't something that comes easy for anyone, even though it may look like some people have an easier time, like, um, you know, achieving certain goals, committing to certain habits. Uh, it doesn't, it wasn't always like that. Like this ability to, to stick to things that you say you want, you know, to stick to certain um, ways of being, to certain habits, to like moving, and taking care of your body and eating well. These are things that can be trained and these are things that are trained, right? They are trained, they are nurtured. Every single person, that's literally like who you are right now is just a is just a culmination of all the patterns and conditioning that you've taken on from, you know, basically who you've interacted with and who you've been brought up by. And so you've just taken on their patterns. So some people, you know, if they've been taught that um, how to, you know, take really good care of themselves, like that's obviously going to come natural to them. Okay. But the thing is, is that the, the point that I want to say is that this is something that can be trained and nurtured. Your ability to commit to the things that you say you want, to the life you want, to commit to yourself um, is something that can be, is something that can be forged. And that's literally what self mastery work is all about. Like this is literally what we do inside my self mastery program is, you know, training you, teaching you, giving you the tools, the methods, the skills, all of that on how to become the best version of yourself, you know, so that you can create the best life. And, you know, um, but the thing is, is that if you don't have these skills, if you, if nobody's taught you these tools, these skills, these methods, then, you know, what happens is most people, you know, the average person that, that doesn't have these, hasn't been taught this, they struggle with keeping their word to themselves. And, and so what happens is, you know, when their feeling changes that day, that next week, um, or the next day or whatever, people are so quick to opt out of what they say they want, right? They're so quick to opt out of the, the, the vision, you know, that they can't stop dreaming about the person they want to be the life they want to live, you know? And so they're so quick to opt out, opt out as soon as it gets hard or inconvenient or when it's not working or just when they're just not feeling it, like they're just, their emotion changes, you know, they, they're so quick to not do the things that they know they should do that will get them to where they want to go. Right. So, um, instead they maybe eat like crap or they eat when they're not hungry or they don't move, they stay inside all day. Uh, you know, all these things, or maybe they, you know, they, they, <laughs> they always put themselves last. Like that's a big one. They, they say, you know, they try to, maybe they had plans with a friend and they, they really don't, they all of a sudden like don't feel like going and they, they end up going anyway, you know, because they don't want their friend to feel bad. And so what they put themselves, you know, at the end of the list. And because of that, they start to feel tired and, you know, exhausted at the end of the day. And so, because they're not learning, they didn't, they're not honoring themselves. Okay. And so what happens is, you know, our ability to, um, like when this happens, you're like a leaf in the wind, essentially. The your ability to create the life that you want to is is impossible. Okay. And so 
that's and that's like what motivation is people kind of just wait for motivation you know they they wait till they're motivated to do these things that um will t these habits you know these actions that will take them where they want to go but you know motivation is something that goes that comes and goes because it's based on how you feel it's based on your emotion it's based on energy right and so um and this is why people like when they set a goal like at the beginning of the year or whatever like when they start a diet or something like that they're super excited right we all are like it's just all of us okay um and we set a goal because we're feeling inspired like we're excited we're, we feel passion but like as soon as that passion fades away which can be literally minutes if not seconds all of a sudden that action that we just committed to right that we said we were committing ourselves to becomes very difficult for us and oftentimes it you know we're just like oh i'll do it later i'll do it tomorrow right and but the thing is that over and over again um the thing is if we do that over and over again, we start to damage trust within ourselves right with ourselves because we just can't trust, you know, we, we can't, we don't like, we can't trust ourselves to do the things we say we're going to do, you know, because we haven't done them, you know? And so we, what happens is it's like, we kind of get to a point where, you know, we eventually just stop, stop trying. It's like, you know, fuck it. Like what, you know, what's the point? And, you know, because it's like, it, it hasn't last the last thousand times. Why is it going to work now? And, and what happens is we just stop trying a lot of the time, right? And we aren't able to create what we want. And we just start to accept the way that our body is or the light our life is. And, and you know, that can be um, like, that can just be really disheartening, right? Uh, life can be really boring. It could be monotonous. It can start to feel just heavy um and we start to just kind of live like this average life where maybe things aren't like super bad but they're not great and like when that happens it's kind of like i feel like we're i feel like it's like we're dying on the inside because we're not growing and it's like we're either we're either growing and expanding you know we're, we're either like light is either coming into us or we're darkening right it's either it's light or dark it's either growing or expanding we're either uh, adding something to our life or we're like losing something, you know, like we're not, um, yeah, we're not, we're not stepping into that life that we want. And so your ability to create the life that you want is impossible if you rely on motivation. Okay. If you just wait until you feel like doing it. So this is why motivation, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's definitely not a good it's not a good route to go, okay? You're not gonna get far, essentially. And, and the reason why is because our, our emotions are constantly changing, right? And so we can't rely on it. And if so if we wait until we feel like we're, we're, if we wait until we feel like working out, if we wait until we feel like eating healthy or going for a walk or uh, meditating, then we never get to where we wanna go, all right? Like I said, we're like that leaf in the wind, okay? And, and it, it's just like, okay, maybe one day I work out and the next day I don't, or, you know, I eat well one day and then the next day I don't, or, you know, I, I rest and do a lot of self-care one day and then I don't do it for the next day. You know, I just, I wait until I have time. And if that's the case, like it, you're just, like I said, you're never going to get there. Okay. So the point, like the, the key is though. Now, this is the hard part, not the hard part. It's just kind of like the confusing part because from my experience, like, okay, you want to look at this like like the yin-yang symbol. Yin-yang is what it's really, uh, what it, how it's really called. Well, whatever. I guess it depends on who's talking. But um, it's, it's never black or white, okay? Like this is, I'm almost 40 years old. I'm actually, today's my birthday. I'm, I'm 38. And gosh, guys, if, I, if there's like one thing that I've really noticed in just all the work that I've done is that it is not black and white. If you go black, you're going to create a particular life that's not very enjoyable. If you go white, you're going to same thing. And what I mean by that is I've been to both sides, right? I've been on one side 
the extreme of like forcing, pushing, and just like, oh, I'm just going to stick to the schedule. I'm just going to, you know, I don't care how I feel, even if I feel like super tired or if my body hurts or my neck hurts or I don't feel good, I'm still going to go in and get the, get my work done, right? I'm going to get my workout in. I'm going to get my 10,000 steps. I'm going to eat this food. I'm going to follow these macros and da, 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 right? Like it's like structure and discipline and, and willpower and forcing and hardcore and like, yeah, that, that will work for a time. That usually seems from my experience, it works for your younger years, like twenties and maybe early thirties. I kind of hit, I hit a wall at the, my late twenties, my late twenties. And most people from my experience, they, they kind of hit a wall around their mid thirties. Right. And, and this is just because their body, our bodies, you know, they start to, especially women, we just become, we, we get, we become more sensitive, right. To all this stress, stress, this tension, this, like, um, this forcing, this feeling of like, just this heaviness of always having to force yourself like to climb up that mountain every single day and get the work done right like that be that actually starts to impede our ability from creating what we want so at one point this way of uh forcing and 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 driving and you know willing your way and, and you know following the plans and, and all that like that worked and that's why we continue to do it but then eventually there's like this tipping point where that stops working and if you don't figure that out like you, you like, you're going to be like, you're going to be hurting pretty bad and you're going to be pretty miserable because what tends to happen is you actually start to go in the opposite direction, right? If you don't start, if you don't learn how to find this balance, uh, you actually start to run yourself into sickness and health issues, uh, you know, headaches, stomach aches, digestion issues, um, you know, body pain, joint issues, uh, you know, adrenal fatigue, hypothyroid, imbalanced hormones, like, you know, loss of, uh, testosterone, all this stuff, right? Like everything is just like the body's just overheating essentially. And that's kind of like the way I like to think of it. It's like, you know, it's like a car or like your computer when you have like a gazillion windows open, it's just like, it's just overheating, you know, it, there's too much, too much, too much working. Right. And there's not enough space for it to operate smoothly. And so that's when like our emails start freezing up or our pages stop loading, et cetera. Okay. So that's one side, right? Like I'd, I'd say like, that's like the black side. And then the white side is, is like this passive side, right? Of this is the, like the complete opposite. It's like just listening to how you feel and doing whatever you feel like in the moment and, you know, just being free spirited and just kind of like, you know, literally being like a, a leaf in the wind, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna like, you know, if I feel like chocolate cake, I'm gonna have that. And I just don't feel like working out. And I just don't feel like going for a walk. And, you know, I'm just like gonna lay low today. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. Like, if that's the thing, like, if that's how we drive, we, we definitely aren't going to create any sort of fitness in our body. We may create more peace. We may create more freedom. But the thing is, it's actually maybe not really freedom because to me, if you don't have any, if you, if you have a low level of fitness, you aren't free because you're limited by what you can do in your body. Like if we go travel somewhere, right. Or if I, you know, if I want to, um, yeah, if we want to go travel to another country or something, like, I want to be able to go explore the mountains. I want to be able to like go, you know, hiking and uh, like go maybe ride some motorcycles or like whatever, like do things with my body. Right. And you got to have a level, a certain level of fitness to do that, to engage adventures. Um, but so that means like you wouldn't be able to do those kind of things if you were taking that other sort of free spirited approach. Okay. Um, and like, and this, and I've had, from my experience, you actually have to hit both sides in order for you to find, find that middle ground. Okay. So this is what I did, you know, and this is a lot of times what people have to do, how long they have to do it for is dependent on that person. But oftentimes we have to go to that extreme side of just like forcing, 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 
until it doesn't work for us to realize, okay, we have to do something different. Okay. And, and usually people will change once they realize it's, it doesn't, you know, it's not working. And then we go to the opposite side, you know, usually out of not by choice, it's like I, our body shuts down or like we're in so much pain that like we, we just can't, we, all we can do is just stay at home and like, you know, rest. And that's what happened to me. And, um, and so then it's like, okay, then you'd go to the other side of like not really doing anything. Right. And just free spirit. But then it's like, okay, after that, you realize, okay, that's not what I want either. I want this middle ground. I want to find this place where I feel good and my, my body is capable of doing the things I want to do. Okay. And this is where, this is where we come. This is balance and this is self mastery. This is where we want to live because this is what's sustainable, you know, and this is what gives you freedom, like true freedom to, to live the life you want, to be adventurous, um, to feel good, to be healthy, to be strong. Right. And so, but the thing is guys, so the big question is because it's not about forcing ourselves, right. We're not going over to the black side. We're also not going over to the white side of just doing it when we feel like it. The big question is, well, how do I create a body, the body and life that I want without forcing going into that habit of forcing and willing my way through my workouts, through food, through eating well, through rest, et cetera, right? So that is, that is self-mastery. And this has been my journey for almost the last 10 years. And the key ingredient to that, guys, to finding that middle ground, that middle way, is none other than love. It's love. It's love, it's love, it's love, it's love, it's love, okay? I have traveled around to different countries. I have made a ton of mistakes on this journey. I've tried a bunch of different methods and it always comes back to love, okay? It's not about having a certain food routine. It's not about having a certain workout routine. It's not about having a certain meditation routine. It's not about having any sort of structure. It's about love. It's about love for yourself, love for your body, love for your life. Okay. Love is the power. And it's true, authentic love. This is not the kind of love where one moment I say I love myself, but the next moment I'm rushing around from one thing to the next, um, you know, tackling as many things as I can on my to-do list or spreading myself so thin that I don't have the time to take care of myself. That's not love. Okay. It's also not love. If you only say, Oh, like I'm only gonna, you know, eat healthy and, and move my body. Like I'm only going to love myself if I look a certain way, you know, if everything's perfect in my life, if I, you know, if I look, if I, if I, if I, you know, I'm already in the body I want, that's not love. Okay love is unconditional love is i love myself regardless of how i look right and this is the this is the key guys because it's really easy to love yourself when you have when your body's perfect and you feel great and you look great and blah 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 right it's really easy to maintain habits there but when you are not in the body that you want and you're not embodying the habits you want like it's more challenging for you to hold that love, that feeling of love for yourself. And this is the work. This, if you, this is where you're stuck, if you are not in the body that you want, if you're not happy about it, if you don't feel good, um, or uh, maybe you're just not in a great place in your life or something like that, it is your only job is to learn how to love love yourself. Quick interruption. Hey guys, Natalie Newhart here. If you resonate with my message and would like to learn more about how to master your behaviors, create peak vitality in your body, and live a more effortless life, then click the link in the show notes to set up a 30-minute coaching call with me. On our call, we'll take an assessment of what's standing in your way from becoming your best self and the steps to overcome them. Okay, back to the show. Okay. And this there's many different aspects to love, right? 
but number one, it's it's just learning how to respect yourself, how to respect your energy, how to respect your body, how to value it, and how to reorient your life in a way that supports that, that is um, in line with that. So if you're running around from one thing to the another, if you're like rushing and you've, you've got all these things that you do on your in the day and you're just you're always rushing from one thing to the next and uh you know like you're saying yes to everybody say you know you you cook the dinner you clean the house you you do all these things and and at the very end of the day that's your time that you can put to yourself that's not love okay and this is where i find a lot of people especially moms um find themselves okay that is disrespect to yourself that's disrespecting yourself that's disrespecting your health disrespecting your energy your body by putting it in constant states of tension of anxiety uh and stress you know because you're not giving yourself the time to to feel to recover to take care of yourself to move your body to uh to open yourself to relax right so and in a world of you know in a world based around being busy and doing more and hurrying and rushing and competing you know love has been love is a forgotten frequency most of us are in a place where we don't know how to love ourselves we don't know what it means to love ourselves and we can't get ourselves to love ourselves because we're so caught up in the go 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 mentality the that way of living of just constantly running around and not not setting aside a good amount of time for yourself and i don't mean just like a 1 hour workout no because it needs to be it needs to be you know it, depending on your the level of fitness that you want to achieve is going to be de determined by the amount of time that you put into yourself how great you want to feel is going to be determined how how much time you put to yourself that is the most precious resource you have so your love for yourself is is going to um uh is it, it's important that you have you construct your life in a way that you have the time to give to yourself okay and the thing is is that we've been so programmed and conditioned away from love by buying into the belief that we constantly need to be be more right we've got to uh wear all the hats we've got to you know be a volunteer and we got to like be the you know be the one that does everything cleans the house does the laundry you know and cooks the dinner um we're you know we've been we've been taught that we need to do more that like we you know that being busy is a form of success or a badge of honor of how like how worthy you are how important you are um we've also been brought up with the belief that it's like we we need to have more we need to have nice things and you know have more money etc and so what we do is we find ourselves you know um you know we're told that we got to look skinny you know we're told that we we you know we should wear makeup we should have nice clothes we got to be busy always striving to achieve something we got to put others first you know we got to go out of our way to help others because that's what a good person would do we got to be nice and not speak up in order to keep the peace right these are all kind of qualities or behaviors that we've been taught and conditioned you know mainly by our parents um, but also the society and as a result you know we a lot of us you know if, if most of us have essentially totally neglected ourselves in order to match this idea of this person that we've been told that we should be right this good person or this important person or this you know likable person this lovable person this pretty person and driving from these ideologies and ways of being will never ever lead to peak health and vitality in your body or in your life because it doesn't give you the time or the space to take care of yourself okay so this is the work right we have to learn how to break free of the these ways of being 
And it's no easy task, guys. It's, it's simple. You can see the path. You can see what you need to do. But getting yourself to do it is, is not easy, you know, because there's going to be a lot of fears that come up, you know, like it's, um, what will they think of me? You know, what will others think of me if I, if I start to put myself first, if, or if I start to do less, you know, will they see me, if they see me sitting down or taking a nap, or if they see me, um, you know, sleeping or moving slower or, you know, asking to get my workout in before, instead of, you know, or asking um, my husband to take the kids to school instead of, um, instead of me taking him to school, you know, how is he going to react? How are other people going to react when they see me doing these things of putting myself first, you know, or, or maybe there's some fears of like, what am I going to miss out on if I start to, if I'm not rushing around and like doing all these things, right? Um, what am I going to lose? Like, what if I, am I going to lose my body? If I, if I start to take better care of myself, if I start to slow down and, and really start to, you know, maybe walk slower or will I, uh, you know, if I, if I take naps, you know, because I'm tired this week or something, am I going to lose my body? You know, there's, there's always, there's going to be all these fears that come up and there's, you know, these, these fears will be like, you know, we fear that we lose, we'll lose either connection with somebody, um, we'll, we'll fear, or we'll fear that we're, you know, judged, you know, they're going to judge us. Uh, we'll fear that we're going to lose our body or that we're going to miss out on life. Um, but the thing is, is that the, like, we're not losing anything you know, we're actually going to gain everything. You're going to gain everything when you start to put yourself first, you know, and when you start to speak up for yourself. And, and we just have to see like, you know, why, why we have to start to clean and weed out the reason why you won't, you aren't able to do that right now. Right. And this is what we do in the self mastery program. We go into deep, deep depth to, to weed these things out. You know, it's like, you know, Maybe, you know, is it that you don't feel deserving enough to put yourself first or to speak your mind or to ask for help, you know, whatever it is there, there's going to be some sort of blockages that keep you from feeling that that's keeping you from feeling your best. You know, you are the only one standing in your way. It's, it has nothing to do with anyone outside, you know? Um, and so that's where you know that's where this inner work really comes into play is really understanding yourself of what's driving you what what patterns and conditioning what is running you to keep you from living that's keeping you from living your best life because you know when we don't feel good this is when we start to resort to food you know when we're when we're running ourselves crazy and doing everything for everyone and you know exhausting ourselves or in the gym or you know doing all this stuff, like this is where we start to resort to food, drugs, alcohol, um, buying things, you know, uh, to feel better, right. To self soothe us, to make us feel, to, to take, to get some relief. Right. Um, and then of course, you know, we may find ourselves, uh, looking to a diet or a medication or a doctor or some widget or some method to fix us, which never is going to actually work at least not for long um because all of our the real fix to all of our problems is not outside of us it's within us right the fix to all of our problems and our habits um is love okay and so learning how to cultivate true love for yourself true authentic love that is not dependent on anything it's not dependent on you know you looking a certain way or or being a certain success or, or whatever. It's not affirmation love, right? This love is, is something, like I said, it's been forgotten. We know nobody, um, nobody's no, nobody teaches it to us unless at least like not in society, you know, um, unless your parents have really, uh, unless it's been handed down to your parents. Um, and from my experience, like very few, well, you know, I mean, obviously I'm going to hang out, with certain kind of people, but, um, yeah, for, for my experience, very rare, right. To, to really, for people to have, uh, been grew up, been brought up with this true love, right. And this true love is, is really remembering the preciousness of this life, 
that you have and the body that you have and learning how to take full responsibility for it all. Okay. Your whole body and your whole system is running, is only running as good as you take care of it. So there's a certain connection that you need to have within yourself. Okay. It's a connection that's deep, that's meaningful, and takes priority over everything. It's a harmonious connection, a loving connection. It's a connection where it's like you you care about this body and you care about how it feels you feel that it's your responsibility to take good care of it you know you genuinely want to honor it and respect it as best as possible and if you don't you're going to pay for it someday in some way okay if you mess up in the mind if you neglect your body by thinking that other things are more important, you're going to mess up the body. Meaning if you allow the states of fear, of lack, of unworthiness to drive you, if you find yourself constantly in that state of like doing, 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 going, 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 you're going to pay for it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And some it happens to some people sooner than later, right? There's always going to, there's always a consequence to our actions. You treat your body well, and it will feel and look good, and it will serve you well. You'll live a vibrant life. You'll feel good. You'll, um, and when you feel good, like you're just, you're going to be um, creating, you know, the the life that you want. You're more likely to feel aligned, to take actions, uh, to to follow your heart, to really create the life that you want. But if you don't treat it well and you run into the ground by forcing it to work out when you're tired, pushing through pain, cramming your day with a ton of shit to do, then, you know, putting yourself last, putting others first, then it's going to result in in a certain, it's going to manifest in your body as a certain amount of pain, joint pain, body pain, injuries, illnesses, you know, jacked hormones, low energy, poor sleep, um, you know, menopause symptoms, weight gain, et cetera. You know, it's funny because like I have a lot of women that I work with that are um, come to me and they, you know, they're going through menopause and they they think they blame menopause for all these symptoms and stuff, but it's actually, um, it's actually their lifestyle that's creating the menopause symptoms. Like it's, that's making the menopause symptoms so bad. You know, it's their, um, way of being it's their their stress their constant go 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 and it's also the fear of menopause that actually creates that because that's stress in itself too but that's off point so um so yeah we must learn to to properly care for ourselves we must learn how to treat ourselves with love and like i said this is something that most of us are not uh, aware of and it's something that needs to be learned and and transmitted from somebody who who has been through this who knows it right and and i when i say love i don't mean just like getting massages or taking hot baths or um you know or like even just meditating but more so it's learning how to manage your energy so that you're not over exerting and over giving yourself you know to others so it's in like really managing your lifestyle in a way so that you have ample time to to take care of yourself and that means that there's going to be you know for most people it's going to be a lot of uh changes you know and so that's why when i take somebody on it's really important that they're ready for radical change in their life because um that's the only like that's just what has to happen in order for you to step into the most strongest most vibrant most fulfilled person you know, your, your best version of yourself, your best life. And <clears throat> the, the cool thing though, is that when we reconnect to this frequency of love, when you really understand it and, and you're in it, <clears throat> then peak health and vitality honestly happens naturally. Like na love is the force. There is no discipline needed. There's no willpower, right? It's, it isn't something that's hard to create. Like being fit and healthy isn't something that's hard to create. It's just something that's natural, 
right? So it's like we we naturally want to eat better because we want to take the best care of ourselves. We we move consistently consistently from a place of love. Um, we manage our emotions. We you know we we understand ourselves. We take time for ourselves to you know really sit with our feelings and understand like uh, why we do the things we do so that we can you know start to retrain that retrain our habits we set boundaries with people you know we don't over over give ourselves we prioritize rest and time for ourselves most importantly okay um but like i said there's no discipline needed so this is not the black way this is not the black side of the yin and yang symbol right this isn't forcing this because like love is our actual is, is our natural state you know um like if we see somebody who like a kid or, you know, a person who's about to walk into the street or fall into a hole and they don't realize it, like it's our natural inclination to save that person, to help that person, to to move them back away from whatever the danger is. You know, if we see somebody that's in danger, like somebody is about to get, you know, attacked or something, it's our natural inclination to help, you know, to either call 911 or for us to actually go in there and and help them. So love is love is already something that's innately within ourselves. We've just forgotten how to love ourselves. We tend to um, maybe, you know, appreciate other people more than ourselves. And we've also covered this love up with a bunch of things and ideas and beliefs that we think are more important you know, such as, I don't know, cleaning the house instead of like taking care of myself, you know, what do I feel like I need right now? Like today I was planning on going skinning up this mountain and man, I was just tired. You know, I actually got my gear on, drove to the mountain and I walked outside and I just, mm, I just, I, my body, my legs were sore. It just felt forced. Okay. And I turned around, went back to my truck. I was like, you know what? It's just not happening today because that would have been the black part, right? That would have been that forceful way of being. And that doesn't work. Like it works for a little bit of time. But if I did that, I would be exhausted all day today, probably all day tomorrow. I'd probably eat my exhaustion away because for like whenever I get tired, like I just want to eat, you know, like it's just something that's like, oh, that just sounds good, right? It's just... I, I, it's a pattern of mine. I'm aware of it, so I don't do it, but um, like, it, like I just know that that's what's going to create. So it's like pushing harder isn't the answer. It's learning how to really listen and understand yourself. And, you know, and this is, like I said, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. Um, and this is what we do inside the self mastery program, right? Is that I teach you how to empower you with the tools and the training to reinstate this love for yourself, to reinstate taking care of yourself, to understand how to do it and, and all the tools that you need to, 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 to create the best version of yourself really. So, um, so yeah, we'll just go ahead. That's basically all I wanted to say with that. Uh, yeah, the biggest key is it's love <laughs> and it just takes time guys. So if, if you're in a place where you just feel like you just can't figure it out, like, you know what to do and maybe you're, maybe you're doing it. Maybe you're on that black side, right. And you're just forcing your way and, you know, white knuckling your way through the day, but nothing's changing and you feel like shit. Or maybe you're on the other side where you've just completely given up. And you're like, what's the point? I'm, you know, you've just given up on your goals. Um, for both of you, like, I encourage you to not give up. The key is, is, not, uh, is not either extreme. It's not the white side. It's not the black side. It's the middle side. It's the middle ground. It's the middle way. And this is what I teach you inside the self mastery program. It's, it's love. Like the, the foundation is love. Of course, there's obviously all sorts of other things that come into it, but at the foundation is love for yourself. And, you know, I'll actually just kind of share this story because I recently had a, um, a training partner that passed away and she was working out and her heart just stopped. She had a newborn infant taking a nap inside the house. Her other kids, she has two other kids. They were at grandma's house and 
just like that, man. She had been working out all throughout her training pregnancy. Um, like, I mean, she was, yeah, she was uh, impressive, very, very impressive. And her heart just stopped. Neighbor just found her uh, laying in the in the driveway. So this is what I mean, guys. Like we, it's very easy to think that this life is guaranteed, and it's really easy to overlook what we have here, and 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 this is what I mean. It's it's coming back to remembering the preciousness of this life. The preciousness of this body that we have i mean i am so incredibly grateful that i have a fully functioning body i have all of my limbs i have a sound mind i have a heart that beats on its own i have you know i have um digestion that works i have my eyesight i, I can hear everything I have so, I mean, I, I have, I have, I have everything. My body is perfect, you know? And it's like, why, why wouldn't I treat it with absolute perfection? Or why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I, yeah, treat it as the perfection that it is? And why wouldn't I make the most out of this life? This life is, is precious. Like literally everything, guys, like like if you just feel your body right now, you know, just feeling the pulsations, the the feeling of blood circulating, feeling any sort of vibrations, any tingling sensations in your body. That's life. That is life. My friend doesn't get to feel that anymore. At least not in this lifetime. She doesn't get to feel the breeze on her face. She doesn't get to feel her heartbeat, her lungs on fire, the sensations when she works out that we, when we work out. You know, she doesn't get to breathe. I mean, just the, su the simplest things, guys. The fact that we are here right now, that you're ab able to listen to this, and do whatever you're doing in this moment, it's precious. It is so precious. And this body that we have, it's our responsibility to take care of it. It's our responsibility to turn our life around, to stop living in this mundane existence of go 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 not even understand why we're doing it like why we're why are we living that when we don't want that it's up to us to create the life we desire the adventures the vitality the strength the love the connection everything the peace So if you're ready for that, if you're at a point in your life where it's like, yeah, I'm done with whatever I've been, I've been, however I've been living. I'm done with this way of living. I'm ready to step into more. I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to live the best version of my life. Then I encourage you to schedule a call with me because there's nothing I love more than working with people who are committed and determined 
to create the best version of themselves, to create the best version of their lives. I'm wishing you all the best. Much, much love. See you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Mastering You podcast with me, Natalie Newhart. I hope you're feeling more empowered and inspired on how to master your mind, your body, and your life. If you don't want to miss your next training with me, be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you consume your podcasts. And definitely connect with me on Instagram. I'm natalie.newhart on Instagram. Much, much love to you all. Until next time. The power of love is here now. The power of now is here now. The power of you, me, is here to create magic on us.